Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we're finally doing the review on the Canon EOS R5. Now, I picked this camera back up when it launched in July of 2020 at a retail price of $38.99, and up to this day, this camera is extremely hard to get and is sold out in most retailers. It took me a while to do this review because I like putting my gear through its paces and through different scenarios, and obviously with the pandemic going on, I don't have weddings every weekend, but I'm finally here ready to share my thoughts. If you're new to this channel, I am a wedding and portrait photographer based out of Austin, Texas, which means in this review, I will not be covering any of the video features of the camera. Like I do with all my videos, I will be putting up images throughout the video so you can get an idea of the image quality and what to expect if you do pick up the Canon EOS R5. With that being said, let's get started. So with my review, I wanna cover three things, image quality, autofocusing, and ergonomics. Let's get started with image quality. So this camera has Canon's latest 45 megapixel sensor. And when you have high resolution sensors, you usually deal with two problems, huge file sizes, and they suck in low light. Before we get there, let's talk about the actual sensor. Canon's finally caught up with the competition. What does that mean? That means that you can safely underexpose a photo two to three stops and recover the shadow detail without any color noise or color banding which puts it right in line with all of Sony's latest cameras, and it is great to see Canon catch up in that department. Now you're gonna have the argument that you should always expose properly, you should use flash. As a wedding photographer, I hate using off-camera flash. It's not my style, it's not the look I go for. I'm not saying it's the right or wrong thing, but for me, I like the flexibility to say, you know what, let me expose for the highlights, let me expose for the sky, and I can recover the detail in the shadows in post. I love that flexibility, and I love the fact that we now have it with the Canon EOS R5. High ISO, the more megapixels you usually add to the sensor, the crappier it is in low light. This camera performs pretty well at up to ISO 6400. I actually did a comparison with the Canon EOS R and at ISO 6400 they perform almost the same, which is a big win for the R5 because it has about 15 more megapixels. So high res sensor, I would say it's usable up to ISO 6400. I've never pushed any sensor above that and in wedding scenarios, I've never been in a situation where I've had to, so I feel very comfortable using this camera in any type of situation, during the wedding day, during engagements, during portrait sessions, and I feel that the ceiling is, is, is just about right. Now, you do have other cameras out there that see in the dark and can shoot up to 12,400 or even higher than that. Again, I've never had to do that, so I can't say I'm missing out, but I can definitely tell you that up to ISO 6400, this sensor does great. File sizes, this is the big one. People will always tell you, you don't want a high megapixel sensor for, for a wedding camera or for kind of the type of work that I do because you're gonna have huge file sizes and you're gonna chew through memory cards. That is true. So the file size on this camera around 50 megabytes of file and that's a pretty big file. If you compare it to the Canon EOS R6, those file sizes are around 19 megabytes. So you're looking about over double the file size with the R5. That does come with the territory. But Canon has introduced Canon C-RAW with the Canon EOS R, so a few years ago, which is Canon's new compressed RAW format. When you shoot in Canon C-RAW with the R5, you still get 45 megapixels, you still get the incredible dynamic range, you still get the same ISO performance. I've compared both different RAW formats, and to me, they are identical. The catch is C-RAW is half the size, which means I've been using C-RAW in this camera and my average file size is around 25 megabytes. That is incredible. So I'm getting all the benefits of a high resolution sensor and I'm getting all the benefits of a smaller file size and I've never had any issues. So to me, that solves the big old problem of massive file sizes. And because of that, what's really interesting here is I own the R6, which I'm filming with right now, and every time I have to choose a camera where I don't need a dual wield, where I'm doing an engagement session or I'm doing a portrait session or I'm going out with a wife, I always gravitate to the R5 because if I'm gonna have the same file sizes, why not have double the resolution and the incredible features of the R5? So we'll get to that at the end, but to me, it gives you the incredible flexibility of the R5 with small file sizes and it solves the issue of massive file sizes with a high resolution sensor. So when we talk about image quality, this is my favorite camera and this is the best sensor I have ever used. I absolutely love everything about it. I love the colors coming out of it. I love the dynamic range. I love the flexibility. I can't sing more praises for this camera. 
the Canon EOS R5 completely blows it out the water in image quality. So with the Canon EOS R5, Canon introduced their dual pixel AF version two, and they improved IAF on humans and even added animal IAF, and also improved its tracking capabilities. This system is incredible. And I hate to make it a comparison, and I hate to keep bringing up the competition, but this system is just as good, if not better than Sony's system and their mirrorless cameras. A huge difference is Canon does have faster glass. We can shoot at 1.2 and this camera, even shooting at 1.2 always nails focus on the eye. And I've never missed focus because the camera missed focus. Now I've definitely missed focus because my shutter speed was too slow or there's motion blur or I did something wrong, but the camera itself, when it's detecting an eye or a face, it always nails it and it's flat out incredible. This is the first camera where I truly trust it to always nail focus and it's actually kind of made it a problem for me because I still shoot the same. So I'm still shooting thousands of images. And back then I can just kind of take away the ones that were blurry and that made my culling a lot easier. Now they're all, they're, they're all hits, right? So as far as autofocusing goes, they're all sharp. So I have to go through a lot more photos when I kind of cull my weddings to select my edits. So from that perspective, uh, it's made it a little harder on me. But when you have this incredible autofocusing system, it truly gives you confidence. And as a wedding photographer, during a wedding day, knowing that my camera is doing what it's supposed to do gives me an incredible amount of confidence and just makes my day go a lot easier. So let's talk about ergonomics. So Canon actually made their camera a little bit bigger. And this is a huge thing for me. Now I know this won't be a problem for everybody, but for me, I am six foot four and I have pretty large hands. Most mirrorless cameras keep getting smaller and smaller. And when you're doing a wedding and you're shooting for eight plus hours, having a small camera really hurts your hand, at least hurts my hand. One thing I missed about DSLRs was I was able to balance a flash and a lens and I could hold it comfortably in my hand. When mirrorless kind of became a thing and I switched over, my hands were cramping at the end of the day because the flash is still the same size the lenses are still the same size, and now you have a smaller grip, so it made my fingers cramp. Overall, just not a fun experience. So this camera almost feels like a 5D, so it's not a small camera. It has an amazing grip. With the R5, they added the 5D kind of wheel in the back. They added the joystick, and overall, this camera feels great in the hand. The buttons are where they should be. It fits the hand perfectly, and I absolutely love it. Now, the joystick. It was a thing that when they added it, a lot of people said finally because they removed it on the Canon EOS R. I don't use it at all. With Canon's new autofocusing and with the touchscreen, I actually thought I was gonna use a joystick when it was reintroduced and I was excited for it, but I barely touched the damn thing and I, I am surprised, but that kind of goes to show you when you have the incredible autofocusing system, when you have IAF, and when you have just touch to track, you don't really need it, but it's there now. So if you wanna kind of continue your old school uh, way of handling your camera, you can. I'll just tell you right now that you probably won't use it as much as you think you will. So I was editing the video and I realized I forgot to mention a few important pieces of the hardware and I'll just bundle it here with the ergonomics piece. I forgot to mention the new EVF. So the R5 has a brand new 5.76 million dot EVF and it is amazing. It is crystal clear probably one of the best EVFs in the market. The reality is I don't use it. That's why I forgot to mention it. Uh, if you rewind time, back when the 5D Mark IV came out and the 1DX Mark II, I owned both those cameras. I loved using those cameras with a dual pixel AF. So I always use them with the LCD screen. That just created a habit that's carried on over the years. And I use the R5 with the LCD screen. So I hardly ever use the viewfinder and you can judge me for that, but uh, I, I love using the LCD screen to frame my shots, just have a bigger picture there. And with that said, the R5 does have a bigger 3.2 inch screen in the back, and that's what I use for everything, and I have zero complaints there. Another thing I forgot to mention is the R5 uses a CF Express card. So these cards are a little bit more expensive, but they are blazing fast. What I did is I purchased a 256 gigabyte card, uh, both for my SD card and my CF Express card. With 256 gigabytes, I can fit in about two weddings, even though I'll never do that. Uh, tons of engagement sessions. Uh, pretty much, I never have to remove the memory cards from the camera. So what I do is I, I shoot an entire wedding, uh, I come home, I import them, and then I format the cards, and they never leave the camera. And 256 gigabytes has been the sweet spot. 
Using C-Raw further extends that, so I've never gotten even close to filling these cards. It is a big investment up front, but going with the bigger cards like that has worked out for me, so I'm using Sony Tough cards and zero complaints there. Again, it might seem like an inconvenience, but when you're shooting with 45 megapixels and you're shooting tons of images and you have practically no buffer, it is absolutely worth it. Which kind of leads me to the final point I forgot to mention, is that the camera also now shoots at 12 frames per second. If you came from the Canon EOS R, that camera shot at five frames per second. For me, I never had an issue with five frames per second. Again, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. I don't really need uh, to take a lot of photos at once. It is nice having 12 frames per second, but because of the buffer with these memory cards and the ability to shoot at 12 frames per second, you can shoot a lot. That's both good and bad. Uh, I put up some family pictures uh, a little bit ago and there's some shots there that I would not have gotten unless I was kind of spraying and praying because the little kid was kind of running around everywhere. I'll actually put the picture up right now again because this little kid would not stay still. So I shot over a thousand images this session, but I nailed this shot. This shot was not posed. Uh, the kid just kind of leaned in that way, looked at the camera for a brief second and then started moving again. The family said it was one of the best photos they've ever had and they've got nothing but compliments. I don't advocate for uh, spraying and praying, but sometimes when you're shooting with families and little kids, you have to. And having 12 frames per second, fast buffer, ended up getting me the shot. So wanted to make sure I talked about the EVF, the LCD screen, the memory card, and the new 12 frames per second because they all do kind of form the ultimate package, which I'll wrap up right now. So overall, it's safe to say, this is Canon's best camera ever made from a photography perspective. It's versatility, it's high resolution, it's dynamic range, it's ease of use, it's ergonomics. I have nothing negative to say. The only thing that can steer you away from this camera is its price. At $38.99, I know it's definitely not an affordable camera and it's out of the reach for a lot of people, but if it's within your budget and you're a professional, this is as good as it gets and I think it's the best camera out there for the job. So guys, let me know your thoughts below. If you use the R5, what do you think? Let's have a discussion down below. And as always, please like this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.